Hi, I'm John Moses, and welcome to this week's Trolley's Cavalry Coaches Show. Later in today's episode, we'll honor our Student Athlete of the Week and talk to Chargers head men's basketball coach, Ted O'Talley. But now, as always, we're joined by Chargers head football coach, Pete Rosamondo. So, Coach, coming off a 63-6 victory over Pace, uh, what was the best part about that victory? Well, the best part about it was we started fast and we played up to our level rather than playing down to the opponent's level. And I think we scored uh, 20. We had 28 points on the board, ran eight offensive plays. So I think that's pretty efficient. And, uh, you know, we did a good job of getting some young guys some playing time. And it's good to see those guys out there having fun, you know, especially in front of a home crowd. So that was about probably the best part. Right. I sense some nervousness amongst you and some of your other coaches. I mean, from a mental perspective, how well did you think you, got, you prepared your team for this Saturday's game? Well, I think they, you know, it's always about how they prepare. And, you know, I think they prepared themselves very well. They could have easily said, you know, we think we're going to win the game and then went out there and, and mailed it in, as so to speak. But they went out there, they played really hard with great intensity and enthusiasm. And, you know, we were able to come out, uh, obviously, on a good note. Well, Mike DeCaro followed up his Northeast 10 Player of the Week with a opening kickoff return for a touchdown. I mean, break down what he brings to your return game. Oh, I mean, he's, first of all, he's lightning fast. I mean, he's as fast as any guy in our league. And he sees, he's very patient, and he sees the holes. And when the holes open, he just accelerates through them. And, and he breaks tackles. He's done that, did that against Merrimack. So, uh, you know, we just, he's just a tremendous football player. Right, and we get a great look at some of the things you just talked about in this first highlight clip, which is Mike bringing back the opening kickoff return for a touchdown. Yeah, you know, it's still hard to believe at this time of the year they're still kicking the mic. Um, you know, I think he's returned two. He's really returned three. We had one call back against Assumption. Um, and in critical moments, he's had big returns for us. Right, so this is a bit of a shorter kickoff. It's a shorter kick to the 20. It's a left return. You know, and Mike just sees the hole, makes one guy miss, the guy they folded in from the backside that we weren't accounting for. And Mike did a great job of... Uh, of making sure that he put it in the end zone. And as you can see, uh, we missed one of the blocks on the third guy in, and Karan Kent, our backside returner, who's back from injury, did a great job of picking him up there in the hole, and it sprung Mike for a big game. Well, that was just a great angle out of it. You really saw the holes develop, and you know, once Mike hit that, I mean, his acceleration, he just, he's like a Ferrari in where he puts it into a seventh gear. Yeah, he's tremendous. I don't know where he gets that speed from, but it is fun to watch. You know, special teams is one place where your team has really dominated at times this season. Uh, but I thought punt return game was really strong this week. And talk about their performance. Yeah, I mean, our, our punt rush team did a great job of, of getting after the punter, making him punt the ball in, in some uncomfortable situations. And Josh Smart did a great job of catching the ball and, and making some big plays. At a, even sometimes when there wasn't something there, he made a guy miss and then got to the wall and you know really made a big play for us. So it's great to see that team come around. Right. You know, your offensive line group, I thought, played a really nice uh, week this week. I mean, they opened up some big holes in the running game. They were able to get to the second level. I mean, break it down a little bit for us, you know, your offensive line this week playing without your right tackle, Lance Chapman. Yeah, they played great. Theory Andrews, who filled in for him, really did a great job for us. And, uh, you know, he's been playing all along this year. So it, 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 the communication is, is, you know, usually there's a, there's a loss in communication when you lose a starter, but there wasn't when Theory was in there and really worked out good. And John Irwin played a tremendous game in his last home game. Right, and in the second highlight clip, we'll really see you know, Mike DeCaro take advantage of that with an offensive lineman getting to the second level. Yeah. So just, what's this call right here? This is just a simple inside zone, and you know, Mike just reads off of the nose guard and you know, sinks, sees the hole and sinks it in there, and then you know, when he gets to the next level, it's all up to him to make it happen. And you know, receivers blocking downfield. Yeah, that's John and Dave Stedman did a great job moving the nose guard right into the linebacker. And, that's really the main read in that play, and Mike did a great job of seeing the hole. I think once this game got out of hand, we got to see a lot of second and third teamers on your depth chart. Uh, give us two guys, one guy on offense and one guy on defense, who really s stood out to you on Saturday. Well, the guy on offense was, you know, Brian Alston did a great job once he carried the ball, ran really hard and saw the holes, and uh, left guard Chris Biondi was tremendous, um, uh, opening the holes for him with that second group. The, uh, the guy that I was really impressed with defensively was uh, Sherwood Janathis, and uh, uh, really just flew around, did a great job out there, made a lot of tackles, and you know had a lot of fun, which is great to see. And he was off injury, too, so it's great to get him back. Yeah, that's great to hear. Uh, you, you've referred to Ronnie Nelson as your 1B at quarterback this season. You know, talk about some of the confidence that your coaching staff has in his abilities. Oh, tremendous. I mean, he's a great runner, 
and he understands our offense all the way through, from the passing game all the way through the running game, and understands our pass protections. And you know, a lot of times when you have a second quarterback, you know, he's going to struggle when he gets in the game because he doesn't understand the protections. And Ronnie certainly does that, and he's got he's got great ability once he tucks the ball, as I'm sure you saw on Saturday. Right, and we see that right here in this first highlight clip where Ronnie just really shows off his running ability with you know, a little bit more power than some of us expected. Yeah, I mean, he, he's, a, he's actually a bigger guy than a lot of people give him credit for. He's about 205 pounds, and he's very, very explosive. They're just running the option and, you know, ran the kid over and just continued on his way. And, you know, once he gets to the next level, it's going to be tough to catch him. But Ronnie ran this offense in high school, and he's really excelled at it here. Boy, just some really terrific work. And then, you know, in the second highlight clip of Ronnie, we actually see you utilize a goal line package that we haven't seen you use too much this year. Yeah, well, you know, we had a we had a little thing in this week for our senior uh, defensive lineman, Scott Schultz, where we, we slid him out underneath to the weak side, and we had a feeling they'd be in man coverage, and, you know, we got the big fella in the end zone there. He was in lot last year against Stonehill. Still a little controversy on whether he was over the line or not, but I don't think there's any controversy there. Well, certainly not. I mean, that's just a really nice moment. You get a fifth-year senior, you know, an opportunity like that. It just doesn't happen every day. No, it's great for Scott. Now, some of the seniors playing in their final home regular season game, you know, who really has stood out to you this season in, in terms of a leadership role? Oh, I mean, all, all ten of them are tremendous leaders in their own right. But, um, you know, Charlie Hatchett's been a great leader as a captain for us. Des Anderson, all three years he's been playing for us, has really been one of those guys that not only is a leader vocally, but it's also just a, you know, a tremendous inspiration for all our players. Causing turnovers is one thing your defense circles every week. It's something they want, you know, you want to win the turnover battle every single week. But in this week, you know, we really saw Rob Hill cause one pretty much by himself. I mean, you, you look at the statistics and you don't really see Rob Hill's name written all over the place, but he just has such a huge effect on the game. Yeah, he's the most dominant defensive lineman in our conference. I mean, only because he just, you can't block him one-on-one. -on -one. You got to put people on him and run away from him. Teams try to read him. You know, there's an old adage, if you can't block him, read him. And when guys do that, he just he runs plays down from behind. I mean, he's, he's a super athlete. And he's a really hard worker, and he understands our defense and what he needs to do within it. Right, and we, and we see this a great example of his ability to read a play in this next highlight clip. They're, they're going to try to run a naked bootleg, and Rod just puts his hands up. Yeah, we, you know, we worked on this all week. You know, where they come out and Rob's, his job is to play the quarterback on a bootleg, tips it up to old, or Raheem there, and Raheem's able to finish it off with a pick. Boy, just a just a really nice effort there by Raheem Stanley. You know, he's playing with so much more speed and space this year. Well, he's faster and he's lighter right now. He's only about 305, where he's playing about 325 last year. Yeah, a moment ago we talked about right tackle Lance Chapman, who missed this game against Pace. You know, talk a little bit about Lance as a leader and how he's played this season, and if you expect to have him this Saturday against St. Anselm. Yeah, I mean, we expect to have him. He's a tremendous leader. He's a great, you know, he's an unsung hero on our team. I mean, he's always been a great leader ever since he got here, just by example. He's not one of those raw rock kind of guys, but, you know, he's certainly a guy that gets out there, practices every day. It's very, you know, it's almost, you know, uh, eerie when you don't see him out there practicing. So it'd be good to get him back on a practice field this week. Well, Saturday's win versus Pace clinched you your second consecutive conference title. I mean, did you envision having so much success so quickly here? Uh, yeah, I mean, you always envision it. I mean, that's, that was part of the plan, the goals, you know, and we've gotten the right people in place in order to get it done. You know, you gotta have, you got to have players, that I know for sure. And you know, we certainly have really good players, and our coaching staff does a tremendous job of putting them in the right places. And, you know, we were able to recognize our goals the last couple of years, and you know, we still have a lot of goals that are unfinished this year. Well, I think you, you and your coaching staff has done a very commendable job in keeping your team focused on just the upcoming Saturday, controlling what you can, just going 1-0 every weekend. But how closely do you follow the other teams in the region, and what would a number one regional ranking mean to you if your team pulls out a victory over St. Anselm? Uh, you know, I mean, you know, with the playoffs, as, as I'm sure Coach will tell you later on, with basketball, you know, you got to be in it to win it. And that's the bottom line. we got to get in the playoffs. I don't care if we're a one or a six. You know, we got to get in in order to have a chance at the national championship. So uh, we're just focused on, you know, each and every week getting out there. It's a new battle every week. I don't really worry about the region. That will all sort itself out. Um, we'll have plenty of time to get ready for the next game. And, you know, we're just focused on St. Anselm. They beat us last year. and You know, our guys are well aware of that, and they're very focused. 
Well, you know, looking back on your season here, what do you think was your team's best victory? Best victory, probably pace. You know, I think it's our last victory. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we did it the way we, we had wanted to do it. You know, we could have came out and stumbled and, and gave them an opportunity to be in the game, and we never did that. And, um, you know, we just hope that we can go out and beat St. A's. That's our main focus right now. I mean, we had great wins against Southern, great win against Merrimack. You know, come from behind victories where our kids just played well, showed tremendous character. And, you know, we hope we can do that again this weekend. Well, how do you avoid a repeat of St. Anselm from last year? It was a team that you expected to beat last season, and then you know, things didn't go your way on that, that Saturday. What has to change this Saturday for your team to come out on top? Well, you know, we, we got to tackle. Last year we didn't tackle. We, you know, we watched the game over and over. We were in position to make plays and just didn't. And you can't do that in a big game and in a game that was as important to us last year to get in the playoffs. And, you know, this year we got to tackle those guys. And, you know, offensively we got to establish a ground game and, you know, get Mike in the open field and protect Ryan, keep him off his back. You know, last year he got hit, you know, a few too many times. So, you know, if we can do that and, you know, I think our team is going to be ready to go. This is a different group of guys than last year. They're they're more focused on on the main goal, which is, to get to the playoffs, and you know they know that it goes through St. Anselm's this weekend. Well, Coach, thanks so much for your time, and uh, good luck this Saturday. Thanks for having me, John. On the other side of this break, we'll talk. We'll talk to our student athlete of the week. This is the Charlie's Cavalry Coaches Show. <laughs> 